all know TV dinners. Unfold that TV tray and fire up the microwave. Here are 10 untold truths of frozen dinners. I can't tell you because it's a secret. The tale of toothpaste TV dinners. Can't afford toothpaste, so tonight my teeth will have... Film at 11. With all the success TV dinners have enjoyed over the decades, not all of them have been winners. Maybe the best bad example dates back to the 1980s and the idea from a toothpaste company that didn't give anybody a reason to smile. While the Colgate Company released their first tube of toothpaste in 1896, nearly a century later in 1982, they decided to branch out into manufacturing foodstuffs. The concept wasn't far-fetched since, after all, you're supposed to brush after every meal and it wouldn't be a bad idea to provide customers with the meal as well as the toothpaste. This launched the almost mythical circulation of the Colgate beef lasagna. Okay, what do you want? Lasagna! While evidence exists from the Colgate frozen dinner, there were no newspaper ads and no standard definition TV commercials. Was this a product failure so disastrous it was discontinued almost instantly and never mentioned again? Uh, you tell me. Colgate representatives themselves have issued statements that the company has no recollection of ever releasing frozen lasagna specifically, which isn't exactly a confirmation or a denial and doesn't mean that they didn't release frozen dinners at one time. Apparently, the concept of a minty toothpaste maker crossing over with a savory beef pasta didn't leave a good taste in anyone's mouth. The Frozen Dinner Founding Father or not. I have no idea. TV dinners might trace back to many different origin stories, but the most persistent tale seems to start at the Swanson Foods Company, which sold frozen oven-ready chickens and turkey pot pies in the early 1950s. A poor holiday season of turkey sales in 1952 left Swanson with a lot of extra turkey supply, and more urgently, no way to get rid of it before the next holiday season. Somewhere along the line came the idea to pre-package it, pour it, freeze it, and sell it along with all the fixings of a classic holiday meal. Smart, Ann. Smart. For years, the TV dinner concept was credited to Swanson executive Jerry Thomas, who reportedly was inspired by the aluminum trays on Pan Am <laughs> airline flights that were used to serve hot food. While that story first broke in 1996 and announced him as the father of the TV dinner, Thomas himself refuted the credit just three years later in 1999, stating that all he came up with was the tray and the packaging. Four years later, a 2003 article backed Thomas up, pointing to the TV dinner as a whole to be a team effort from several Swanson employees. This was a team effort. Even today, the United States Library of Congress points to a few different historical options of who might be the true originator. Still, by the time Jerry Thompson passed in 2005, newspapers, television, and memorials widely hailed him as the dad of the TV dinner. Just like mom used to make. Ketchup. Just like my mom puts on her spaghetti, baby. If there's a father of the TV dinner, then surely there must exist a TV dinner mom, too. Mama! And it turns out that's exactly the case for bacteriologist Betty Cronin, who is dubbed mother of the TV dinner by the Chicago Tribune in 1989. Betty, thanks to her bacteriology degree, was intricately involved in the TV dinner production process. She contributed to the technical and food safety designs that allowed frozen foods to be reheated quickly while also safe for consumption. She figured out the correct portion sizes and temperatures that allowed the different ingredients to be heated at the same time and to the same temperature to create a hot, enjoyable meal. The end product was a Thanksgiving-style spread of surplus turkey, peas, sweet potatoes, and cornbread stuffing. I just wanted a goddamn stuffing. Finally perfected before heading to stores and selling for 98 cents each, Betty's exact science made sure the OG Swanson TV dinner instructions had them cooked from frozen at 425 degrees for 25 minutes. Almost two years after the 1952 turkey surplus, Swanson frozen dinners hit stores and sold no less than 10 million units. New to Babbletop? Well, no judgment here, just good food and good times. So hit that subscribe button. Now back to the freezer. Show goes on! Frozen dinners and angry husbands. You're angry.
You angry? Frozen dinners hit stores in the 1950s, and the debut of the tin tray treat did its part to open the doors of equality, too. Moving the traditional 50s housewife away from the kitchen by cutting out the long hours of prep and cooking time that family dinner required back in the day were a peak feature of the frozen dinner. This, for the first time, opened up schedules for women to pursue hobbies, employment, and outside interests. How cool is that? But not everybody back then thought it was a good idea. Father of the TV dinner, Jerry Thomas would often recount the stacks of hate mail that Swansons would receive from disgruntled husbands, demanding they cut production of TV dinners so that men could have traditional home-cooked meals once again. Chicken again? We have chicken every day! I'm tired of chicken! Still, convenience triumphed over chauvinism, and even today, the TV dinner is opening up avenues for busy folks from all walks of life to have a little extra time for themselves. The dinner revolution will be televised. We are eating dinner and watching TV. Just how exactly did frozen dinners come to be called TV dinners anyways? If you've ever wondered about the association between convenience food and a Netflix binge-watching session, well, back before the age of flat screens, streaming, and HD TV, when the Swanson Frozen Dinner was first released, television was a new and futuristic phenomenon. Only 9% of American homes had a television in 1950, but within five years, that number ballooned to 64%. Wow. The traditional dinner table gathering was foregone for primetime TV viewing in living rooms, and to facilitate this came the invention of the TV tray. The introduction of TV tray tables predated Swanson Frozen Dinners. At the time, people were still just eating home-cooked meals off of them. It was again TV dinner dad Jerry Thompson of Swanson stepping up, coining the name TV Dinner for Swanson's new Frozen Meals release, officially branding the dinners with that name and printing the new TV Dinner moniker on the the box and advertisements. That's why it's called that. The dinner trays happen to be the perfect, perfect size to fit a TV tray table, and the marketing opportunity was too perfect a match to pass up. After being burned into our collective brains for so many decades, maybe it's the reason watching TV always gives us the munchies. Large and in charge. Okay, give me the large. Speaking of the munchies, we all know how it feels when they really hit you and a small afternoon snack isn't gonna cut it. Not good enough. Enter the king-sized evolution of the frozen dinner, Hungry Man. After 20 years of success in the frozen dinners market, Swanson doubled down on their deliciousness and introduced the Hungry Man meal in 1973. Game changer. They came in a larger serving size and were more protein and meat-centric than the original TV dinners. It might have been a pivot after the original 1950s backlash from the upset husband market as the Hungry Man was targeted to the masculinity of the male demographic with advertising focused on the meat content. 70s NFL superstar Mean Joe Green signed on as a spokesperson for the massive microwavable dinners. Much like Super Bowl halftime shows, Swanson then followed the bigger is better philosophy and introduced the Hungry Man Double XL dinners that were produced from the 1990s to the 2010s. These supersized Swansons clocked in at one and a half pounds a grub, boasting 1,500 calories per box. At that size, it's a Amazing they even fit inside a microwave. Fancy enough for a banquet. That's fancy. That's fancy. When the good folks at Swanson eventually perfected TV dinners, they certainly didn't corner the market. Rival company Banquet Foods was first founded in 1953, right around the same time frame Swanson was finalizing the original TV dinners. Banquet originally sold frozen meat pies that could be heated in the oven, but when Swanson introduced the full dinner option, Banquet wasn't far behind with their own frozen dinners hitting supermarket freezers in 1955. They matched competitors stride for stride in the frozen meals revolution, including introducing a rival to the Hungry Man, which they somewhat awkwardly named the Man Pleaser. What did you say? But the biggest idea from Banquet was actually a frozen meal that didn't need an oven or a microwave, and they were simply dubbed cooking bags. Forgoing the oven and the aluminum tray, cooking bags were exactly what they sounded like, featuring a sealed plastic bag containing meat and a gravy or sauce that could be tossed directly into boiling water. Easy peasy. Eventually, the arrival of the microwave rendered the cooking bags obsolete, but Banquet carries on today with a line of frozen dinners that shows there's room on the TV tray for more than one frozen feast. 
Diet Frozen Dinners. I'm on a diet. When it comes to non-Swanson companies being innovators in the frozen dinner market, Stouffer's made their biggest contribution back in the 1980s. In the face of jumbo dinners like The Hungry Man, they capitalized on a new national obsession with health and wellness to create a lean and mean alternative. The 80s introduced the world to health inventions like the Thigh Master and maybe most importantly of all, lean cuisine. Hey! Is that healthy food? Years of research went into trying to change the couch potato reputation for TV dinners, and Stouffer's team settled on using herbs for taste instead of salts and adding more veggies instead of more meat. The first Lean Cuisine rollout had 10 varieties, each of which topped out at no more than 300 calories. Shut up and take my money! Lean Cuisine remains the king of diet frozen meals even today, showing that if you don't go big, you don't have to go home. A Microwave Mamma Mia. This is amazing. Back off. It's our microwave. Ours. <sighs> Another juggernaut in the frozen dinner battle royale traces its roots back to the early 1900s and the founder's Italian lineage. Today, Michelinas stands out from the pack with a focus on classic pasta dishes instead of the meat and potatoes style of other TV dinners. The company was founded by Gino Paolucci and was named for his mother, Michelina Paolucci. The company took inspiration from her Italian heritage of the homemade pasta that she filled the family home with. Babbity boopy? Che cosa? Peter, what are you doing? Doing. Speaking Italian. Today, the brand is distributed in over a dozen countries around the world and is the lead seller of single serve frozen entrees in Canada and the third largest producer in the United States, thanks to four US based factories cranking out over 2 million Michelinas meals every day. 100 minus 43, take the one from the zero. Wait. <gasps> It just makes us wish they made microwavable breadsticks to go with it. Freezing the future. I guess some things are just future-proof. Despite frozen food's success over the decades, it has faced plenty of criticism. For all of the convenience, these dinners require extra salt and fats, as well as heavy processing to make them last longer. Keeping the product stable for extended periods often means using high levels of trans fats and preservatives. And at the end of the day, a frozen dinner will just never be as nutritious as a fresh home-cooked meal. It is what it is. By 2012 and 2013, headlines began to lament the decline of TV dinners, as sales to that point had been on a six-year slide, and it seemed America had finally fallen out of love with their frozen favorites. But a saving grace arrived in the form of 2020 and its inconveniences, when the classic TV dinner was the perfect solution for folks stuck at home. Sales ballooned across the board in 2020, and the demand is holding today, as sales are still 5% higher than they were pre-2020. 2020. Not bad. Not bad. Over $72 billion of frozen meals were sold last year, showing that the comfort of a TV dinner will always have a spot in our freezers and in our hearts. Indeed. Indeed. We've got more. Just tap or click on another video. First time here? Then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.